Oh, have I introduced Miss Piper, Jim? This is Captain Kirk, Miss Piper. I recognized the captain immediately. A mutual friend described you, sir. You have something to report, Miss Piper. Oh, yes, sir. I'm afraid our investigation turned out very little, Commodore. There is, of course, Mr. Spock's years of service with Captain Pike, indications of his extreme loyalty. But that's it, Jim. That's as much as that poor devil can do. His mind is as active as yours and mine, but it's trapped inside a useless vegetating body. He's kept alive mechanically, a battery-driven heart. And there's no way he could even have asked for that message to be sent. Stand by to receive new orders, Enterprise. It was one of two things. Either someone sent a message diverting us here, or someone on board the ship lied about the He's as incapable of telling a lie. He's also half human. And that half is completely submerged. To be caught acting like us or even thinking like us would completely embarrass him. Someone's interfering with my command and my ship. I don't know who it is, but I mean to find out. Even you. If I thought you had the technical know-how, I'd suspect you, but you don't. Spock does. He would not make a false entry. There's a false... Spock. That's impossible. Dr. McCoy, report to transporter control. Dr. McCoy to transporter control. McCoy here. You need to board the Enterprise, Doctor. Medical emergency. Well, what is it? Sickness? Injury? How bad is it? That's all we have on it, Doctor. Just needed a board. <sighs> Probably. Oh. I'm certifying I ordered you to read it. Know anything at all about this planet? Whatever ship captain knows. General Order 7, no vessel under any condition. Mendez here, what is it? Starship Enterprise, Commodore. It's warping out of orbit. Refuses to acknowledge our signal. Out of orbit, Mr. Spock. Where she's going, Mr. Hanson. Someone's trying to hail us, sir. There's a shot coming up here where uh, Mr. Spock has now commandeered the Enterprise, and he has this uh, lieutenant who's at the helm say to him, uh, Mr. Spock, there's a starbase shuttlecraft is approaching, and that you look on the view screen, and in the original, the Enterprise is moving forward because you see the stars coming at them, um, which made no sense to me because. Spock and this guy are obviously staring at the screen to say, eh, we're being followed by a shuttlecraft. And then I think it was Mike that had the idea of putting the nacelles, uh, the engine nacelles, into the shot so that it really ties it in. So that now you realize that you're, you're looking back at, uh, to try and find the shuttlecraft. The size of a starbase shuttlecraft. Shall we reverse Take helm? No action. Make no contact.
Shuttlecrafts are cool. They're, they're contained entities that people have conversations and they're cut off from the ship. One of the cool things that we did, and it's really subtle, you have to look at the front windows that we put in the passing stars. It just opens up the whole romance of being in space and also the terror of being in space. They're this tiny shuttlecraft. They're going to run out of fuel and they're going to run out of oxygen. And if the Enterprise doesn't turn around, they're going to die. Starbase Shuttlecraft 1 to Enterprise, come in, please. Enterprise, Commodore Mendez and Captain Kirk. If you read me, you are ordered to reply. Repeating it on all emergency frequencies, Jim. Spark is headed for Dallas 4, over. Pulling ahead of us fast. Fuel is down to 63.3. If we turn back now, we've just got barely enough to get us back to the base. Shuttlecraft to Enterprise, come in. Shuttlecraft to Enterprise, come in. Enterprise, come in. Coast. Blast you anyway. You had no right to come along. I keep wondering who might be after. Engines are reversing. Captain's log, star date 3012.4. Despite our best efforts to disengage computers, the Enterprise is still locked on a heading for the mysterious planet Talos IV. Meanwhile, as required by star... Captain's log, star date 3012.6. General Court Martial convened. Mr. Spock has again waived counsel. Coming up is the single most complicated visual effects shot in the entire Star Trek series. It actually was originally the last shot of the first title sequence for the cage, the original pilot episode. It's the Enterprise zipping through space, but then the camera dives in to the bridge, sees into the dome, and actually goes into the dome. It was cutting edge for 1964. But unfortunately, it doesn't hold up at all. Uh, the angle that the Enterprise is at versus the, the angle they had the camera on a crane at, it just totally doesn't match. Something that they couldn't do back in the mid-60s. I mean, they probably would if they could, but they just, they weren't, you know, technically able to do that. When we started, 
we knew that the, the single most difficult shot to pull off was going to be this fly through. So when we went to CBS Digital, the first thing we talked to them about was, was this shot. We said, look, this is coming and you guys gotta get on it now. And they assigned somebody. I think that poor guy was just working full time on rotoing out and uh, just figuring out how to do it. Basically duplicating the emotion on the original animation of the ship and then blending seamlessly with the original uh, on-set photography. We had them go in and digitally recreate the bridge. We had them create digital characters. And then they seamlessly melded those digital characters into the live action characters, allowing us to put the digital enterprise in the shot in a way that we could make its angle match the original angle of the camera. For some episodes, they actually had the original camera negative film. This one they didn't, obviously. They, all they had was the finished actual, actual image. So what CBS Digital had to do was they not only did they build a digital enterprise, but they built a digital bridge. Not only did the digital bridge, they had digital characters in there, and they had to seamlessly cut from the digital characters walking across the screen to uh, Jeffrey Hunter and Leonard Nimoy. I think it took them like six weeks. I mean, they were working on it. We were coming in and looking at uh, early episodes, Balance of Terror, et cetera, et cetera. But they were still working on this for Menagerie. Um, because technically it was it was so difficult. But the result is undeniable. I mean, it's a fantastic shot now, and it just uh, brings that whole thing to life. So we were totally stoked. It was like New Year's Eve, you know, when, when we saw the shot. We were really excited. This is 13...